Welcome to Pro Wrestling History Daily Top 5. I'm your host, the eclectic gentleman, Stefan Watts, and join me as I count down the top five moments for this day in pro wrestling history. But before we get started, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get our wrestling history on. Number 5, 1941. Wild Redberry defeats Danny McShane for the World Light Heavyweight title in Hollywood, California, ending McShane's third reign and beginning Barry's third. Number 4, 2021. Daphne passes away. Daphne began her professional wrestling career in WCW in 1999. While in WCW, she was known for her association with David Flair and Crowbar, and she became the second woman, after Medusa, to hold the WCW Cruiserweight Championship before the promotion was purchased by the WWE in early 2001. She then appeared on the independent circuit until she signed with Total Nonstop Action Wrestling in 2008. Injuries forced her to retire from in-ring competition in 2011, but she continued to make appearances in non-wrestling roles for various promotions until 2018. Number 3, 1961. Bam Bam Bigelow is born. Recognizable by his close to 400-pound frame and the distinctive flame tattoo that spanned most of his bald head, he was noted as being the most natural, agile, and physically remarkable big man of the past quarter century, while former co-worker Bret Hart described him as possibly the best working big man in the business ever. Number 2, 1990. One of the most memorable angles in Memphis wrestling takes place during a live Saturday morning wrestling broadcast on WMC-TV in Memphis, Tennessee as Eddie Gilbert attempted to run down Jerry Lawler with his brother's Doug's car in the parking lot outside the studio. The car hit Lawler, who rolled over the hood and fell to the ground, suffering a bruised hip. Fans watching the show on television actually called the police to WMC Studios to report what had happened. Number 1, 1979. The WWWF Intercontinental Championship is officially introduced with Pat Patterson as the first champion, having won a fictional tournament in Rio de Janeiro. In actuality, he had defeated Ted DiBiase for the WWWF North American title, and the promotion decided to replace that title with the Intercontinental Championship. And that's our list. Make sure to comment below what you feel was the number one moment for this day in pro wrestling history.